Please welcome to our show from Muscle Activation of South Florida, PJ and Todd. Thanks for coming, Hello. guys. Yeah, thank what you. Is, here, you're very welcome. What is muscle activation? Well, uh, muscle activation, uh, first is muscle activation techniques is what we use, and it's a, an amazing tool that is used to assess muscle dysfunction and correct the imbalances that exist. As I like to tell people, like when we, you know, sometimes you come across like a too good to be true type of thing. And, you know, with muscle activation, it's one of those too good to be true type of things. You know, it's like it's a process that, you know, is designed to get muscles stronger, get you more flexible, accelerate your healing and recovery. It's, you know, like for me, it's been a life changer. Okay, how is it different than, say, chiropractic or uh, other modalities that people use? Because I know, for me, I was, when I introduced the show, I was saying that people, have used, if they're at the point where they're not working out anymore, they're usually at the point where, where they feel like nothing's helping. They've tried chiropractic, they've tried this, they've tried that, they've got a, even a cortisone shot, yeah. and here they are now. No, that's how a great, is it different? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, we get that all the time. You know, it's like when we have people come into our office, you know, we, off, we have a consultation process, and you know, that's the first thing we want to know is if they've tried all those other things or if they've been to them and most of the time they've been to the chiropractor and the physical therapist and you know like when I explain to them what we're doing you know it's we look at something very specific you know we're looking at you know how muscles work you know how strong are they um, so in essence we're looking to uncover weakness you know a lot of other modalities that are out there are looking at the other end of the spectrum you know and they're they're you know, designed to look at, you know, what's painful or what's tight in the body. So, you know, it's like if, if you're looking at that spectrum, you know, weakness, tightness, you know, we're just kind of flipping that spectrum around, you know, and so where everyone's designed to, or every modality that we've come across is designed to, you know, loosen up what's tight, we're actually trying to tighten up what's loose. Oh, he's so kind of like the opposite. The opposite, yeah. Yeah. So I'd say a lot of people, when they have a pain somewhere, generally that's the overworking part of the body. So if you're saying something is overworking, then conversely something might must be underworking. That's what we're seeking out. We're trying to find out well, what's what's underworking, leading that part of the body to overwork itself and potentially create injury or pain. Yeah, like one of the things that you know, like I come across, like when I'm talking to people, like yeah, you know, like my trainer says I compensate, or my doctor says I compensate, and compensation is like this it has this negative connotation. You know, it's like oh my god, I compensate, and it's like well, compensation is adaptation. You know, it's your it's the body's way of figuring out a way to be strong. So the compensation aspect is not necessary necessarily a bad thing. So what we're trying to do by getting muscles to be stronger, um, I guess in a way, like make their compensations better. Yeah. So maybe like it's actually really geared toward an individual, not the norm then. Would that be the case? It'd be like you, if I have one leg that's shorter than the other, you're not going to try and lengthen my leg and try and make my what's weak strong, what's strong weak. No, so that no, that, that's not what we do. You know, it's like, you know, because we get a lot of that also. You know, people right. coming in saying, yeah, my doctor says I have yes. one leg longer than the other. And I'm like, well, you know, unfortunately I'm not God, so I can't sit here and, you know, make one one leg longer than the other. Uh, but a lot of times, like as we're assessing people, you know, we see, you know, those discrepancies, one shoulder higher, one hip higher, you know, and that could be where the discrepancy comes into play there, you know. Yeah, and that's really, I mean, you know, muscle tension is really what, what orients our skeletal system. So if we have a postural, you know, misalignment somewhere, generally it's because some area of the body or some muscles of the body are too tight when others are a little too loose. Now, generally, in, you know, for the most part, people are going after that too tight. Hey, let's loosen this up, but sometimes you're adding looseness to a looseness problem. You know, when the body has an inability to contract well on one side of the joint, then the other side of the joint tends to tighten up to restrict or protect us from injuring ourselves. Now, like having worked with me, you know, and you see, you know, like I love using analogies. And you know, basically kind of simplifying what he just said, mm -hmm. I had a client come into the office and I'm kind of showing them the, the TV mount, you know, and, you know, it's anchored into the wall. It's got like the screws in there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I could sit there and unscrew one of the, one of the screws there and, you know, to balance this out, you know, I asked the client the question, do I want to loosen up all the other screws to balance it out? Or do I want to make the loose screw tighter to make sure that that anchor or that mount is pretty stable in the wall? And it's like, oh, well, you want to tighten it. And it's like, yeah, you know, so that's what we're really trying to do. You know, like what we're doing is tightening up what's loose in the body instead of loosening up what's tight. I imagine that's like a process to actually find out how that is. I now I had the pleasure of actually going in to visit Todd and PJ. You weren't there at the time, but Todd I've seen a couple of times for just different things and actually just to see what this is about because it's so different. It's so different. It sounds so simple the way you're saying, it, but the analogy you had just to find some little things on me was amazing. I had uh, like I could move it this way in one direction. Uh, I felt fine. This way was a little bit more, and I can definitely feel that it was more. And after you worked on me, I think you brought my right shoulder 
to, it's, it's what you don't expect it to be. And then I was able to turn so much more just from, from you, uh, I guess, activating that one spot. Is that what it is? <clears throat> well, pretty much, you know, and it's like, you know, you look at you, uh, the body, you know, and everything connects. And we'll hear doctors, therapists, trainers, they'll sit there and tell you everything in the body connects. But it's rare that everybody, every, everybody treats the body as if it connects, you know. So if you're coming in with, you know, some lower back discomfort, a lot of times, you know, you're like it, the lower back is what's being treated. But what we're looking at is, you know, it, kind of like mechanics are to a car. We're trying to figure out, you know, well, what's going on somewhere else? Where is this imbalance taking I place? I love that. Yeah. So, I love that. So you're saying like your your back is the symptom of something else that could be bothering it. So you're yeah. not gonna. Most people, like you said, that's actually so good. And that's yeah. that's another reason why I, I'm so glad you guys are here because it's so important for people to know that you may have pain in your back, but it may not be caused from your back. Yeah. And you guys actually yeah. dig that out and yeah. find out what it is. Well, that's brilliant. Well, an, an analogy that PJ uses a lot, you know, it's like the check engine analogy. You know, yeah. like, you know, kind of explain that a little bit more. Yeah. So you know, if you're driving in your car and on the dash, sometimes that little light pops up, that that check engine light doesn't exactly say what's going on. It just means something's up. So we can do a few things. We can either you know block out the light, pretend like it's not there, mm -hmm. keep driving, or we can take the car to the mechanic and, and find out, well, why did the light come on in the first place? That's what we're trying to find out. What, why if, if pain, let's just say pain is that check engine light, if pain is presenting itself in the body, why is that happening? There's usually a reason, and it may not even be coming from the area the pain is actually coming from. We need to look at the body as a whole. So once we find those imbalances, we correct those and hopefully address the reasons why that pain is, is presenting itself in the body. So I, I know if I were to take my car to the mechanic and the check engine lights on, the mechanic came out and said, okay, I found the code to, to, to shut the sensor off, you're all good to go. I wouldn't feel pretty, pretty or too comfortable with that. You know, so you know, like what I want to know is, well, why does this thing keep going on? You know, we don't want to just cover this thing up you know, and say we, we can relieve the symptom, but are we looking for relief or are we looking to you know, figure out why this is happening? So hopefully doesn't happen again. Yeah, so, so you can sort of putting a band-aid over this, you know, fix it. We don't yeah, need exactly. to put a band-aid. Well, yeah. you know, another analogy I tend to use that makes some sense is uh, like if you're looking at your tire on your car and you see that the corner of the tire is worn down. You know, what do you do about that? Do you just change the tire? Or do you potentially change the alignment or the way the tire sits on the road? And that's generally what we're trying to do here is we're not just trying to address the symptom, which would be, hey, the, the tire is worn down on the corner. Let's just change the tire. Something's wrong with the tire. It may not be the tire's fault at all. It could be that it's just not contacting the road correctly. We need to address uh, the alignment, the, the muscles, too, the tension right? of the body. Right. Yeah, I have a, a lot of people that, that I train that complain you know, that they have actually had to stop doing what they're doing yeah. because you know my foot hurts or my this hurts or my that hurts and later to find out that perhaps it was from their hip yeah. or perhaps it was from their you know but they're treating only their foot and that's where you guys come into play to actually find out where the problems are and you know um, th th that's so important because I mean you you can get to the root of the problem and actually solve it and not cover it up for a little while and have it you know reincur which right. is really important. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's like, you know, uh, if, mm -hmm. again, uh, using analogies because I know for me, analogies is what made this all make sense to me when I first started off doing this. And, you know, one that we came across is like playing a game of tug of war, you know, and I think the first time I said this analogy was to like a little kid, you know, it was like at a lecture he was doing for a running group and I was like, oh yeah, it's like playing tug of war. You know, so, I mean, you look at tug of war and the game of tug of war, the goal is, you know, for one side to pull the other side off balance. Right. Okay, well, you know, the side that's pulling with the most tension is going to win all the time. You know, in the body, you know, what's producing the most tension could be what's winning this internal muscular game of tug of war. So what we're trying to do is find where this tug of war game is being played and add like again, add tension to the weak side so it begins to balance this thing out. You know, and as long as we can balance it out, you know, you know, maybe those, you know, structural imbalances or skeletal imbalances that people come in with, my legs longer, my shoulders higher, maybe you start seeing things being corrected posturally because because mus the muscular system is working a lot better. Right. Okay, what about the success? I know you guys have worked with some really, really like top athletes. I met you. You were working with some of the athletes on tour in, in uh, at Chris Everett, right? Right. right. And um, I, PJ, again, I, I'm only just gotten to know you, but I know that within your clinic, the clinic in, in West Boca, mm -hmm. um, you guys have have again seen some really top athletes. And what are your results like? And how long are the results? 
Um, you know, when it, it's really fun to work with athletes because, I mean, what makes them an athlete is, is how advanced their nervous system is. But what surprises me when I work with some of these top-level athletes is they can have imbalances in their body like anybody can have imbalances in their body. A lot of times for them it doesn't show up because they're so good at compensating. But if they ever got caught in specific positions, so when I assess them and I find out, okay, they have some limitations in their motion, I start to test for muscle contraction, sometimes they, they can't contract certain muscles. But they have so many strong muscles in their body, generally they don't even know that exists. But if they ever got caught in the position that I placed them in for a muscle test, they have no strength and that's where injury happens. So if we can find those for them and we can optimize all these little weaknesses that exist in their body, it reduces their risk for injury and increases their performance and they love it. Okay, that was so, it's not only if you're injured and if you're hindered, this is actually for, for say if you have um, a mom that has a, a family that has a, 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 a college athlete that wants to go pro or wants to this oh, yeah. is for to, and performance enhancement as well. I didn't realize that. Yeah, typ okay. typically the people that come into us, you know, we're usually seeing them, they're at their worst. Um, right. but, and as we start getting them back to functioning more efficiently, then what we see is that they're continuing with us because they want to remain that way. And so, so you know, so think of it as like, a, you know, like an iPhone, you know, like an iPhone battery, you know, and everyone has an iPhone or an Android and you mm -hmm. see, you know, that everyone comes in with that, bat, you know, with their iPhone bat, their muscle iPhone battery, so to say, like in the red. And so so what we're trying to do is boot this battery or the muscle, the, the, the muscle's ability to contract, we're trying to boot that up. And so it's like once we get it to a good balance point and they're now in the green, now we got we want to raise this threshold of how well their muscles perform so they don't have, you know, these, you know, symptoms that are continuing to occur. Yeah. Um, oh, that's really great. How did you guys get into this? Hmm. Well, um, I have um, a degree in exercise science, and it led me into personal training. Right. So I, I started with training, and I, I definitely I noticed over time that certain clients would have either motions they couldn't create or motions they would do that would cause pain or even times where they would call and say, hey, my back is out. I won't see you for a few weeks. And it was, it was frustrating. You know, I had to almost uh, quarantine their workouts to the point where I kind of boxed them into an area where I knew they wouldn't hurt themselves, but it just wasn't as much fun, and I knew I wasn't really addressing the problem. So uh, honestly, I, had, I came across Todd and he introduced this technique. He had actually found this prior to me and it just absolutely blew me away. I mean, my way of addressing the issues that I was finding in my clients was stretching. So I was, I was the tightness person. If you came to me and there was tightness, I would stretch. I would try to loosen mm -hmm. up the tight right, areas. Right. But this just absolutely blew me away because I saw tightness go away by not stretching, but by strengthening what was weak on the other side of the tightness. So it was, right. it was for me, it was almost instant in your office. Yeah. Right. Like for me, uh, that <laughs> that was what the the uh, whole pull to have you guys come on the show is. There was an instant difference for me. Yeah. And I think that's why both of us got into doing this because it was instant for me. It was instant for him. You know, I know for myself, I grew up an athlete. I played baseball my pretty much my whole life. I played professionally for a few years, and it just got to a point I couldn't do it anymore. I was a catcher. Every injury. I had knee, ankle, hip, shoulder, neck, and I just worked through the pain because that's what you're told to do is work, play through pain. And it just got to a point where I just said, I can't do this anymore. And so my goal was to figure out why my body broke down at such a young age. And, you know, both of us having graduated from FAU's exercise science program, you know, it was like kind of like the gateway into exactly. finding this. You know, it's like we started off as strength coaches, trainers. And it was like he said, our frustrations with, you know, training clients and having to, you know, I guess like water down their workouts is to not hurt mm -hmm, them. Right. And when we came across this technique, it really gave us a, such a powerful tool to be able to, you know, now assess what's going on. Because I know, like, when I was working as just a trainer, you know, I would have people fill out a health history questionnaire. But the assessment process to this is by far the most thorough, in-depth assessment I've ever come across. So can we take a commercial break here and, and go into just, like, a brief overview, like set up your table? Would that be okay? Yeah, and you can yeah, just great. show out what that great. is? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that it, I've already had this done and I was blown away with how much you do in comparison to someone else that I've gone to to find out what what ailments I have or what imbalances I have and, and it was phenomenal. You okay guys to do that? Yeah, yeah Okay, absolutely. we'll be right back. Thank you. I'm Chris Everett and you're watching WRP B You got it T V I T V but you were close ITV wait, wait. <laughs> RPV R P B R P B Yeah Hi, I'm Chris Everett, and you're watching RPB w ITV. Oh, you're close enough. Oh, hi, I'm Chris Everett. Hi, I'm Chris Everett. You're watching WRPB I 
TV. TV. <laughs> Thank Wait, you, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Hubbard. <laughs> You're watching WRPV ITV. All right. Oh, you have so much to do. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay. Bye. Welcome. Hi, welcome back to the show. We have PJ and Todd here from the Muscle Activation of South Florida, and they're going to show us what their assessment is and how thorough it is, and just a, a brief example of it, right? Right. Okay, that's great. And also, before we start, I have to ask you, I have to ask you guys, you guys didn't make this technique up. It's so many people have not heard of this. Where is this from? Um, this, uh, this technique was developed by Greg Roscoff. Uh, he was someone that um, partially he was driven to develop something like this because of his own personal experiences. He was a former athlete. He, uh, he had some injury over his time and the conventional methods that they were using for him were, were not effective. And it led him to kind of thinking outside the box. So everybody was kind of attacking the tightness that was present in his body, but meanwhile, it wasn't helping him. So not until he started to uncover some of these hidden weaknesses that were in his body, he started to develop something called muscle activation techniques. He's been working in professional sports for quite some time. Uh, right now, he's located out in, uh, in Denver and currently with the Broncos and, and the Denver Nuggets. That is such a, I'm so glad I asked that question. It, it really validates what you guys are doing. And like I said, nobody knows about this that I know of. Anyway, I'm in this industry for so many years, I cannot wait for this to get out for everybody to hear this it's such a great natural alternative and so non-invasive it's the, the most important part of this it's non-invasive yeah. you get up and you go it's not like oh my gosh you're you're out for 10 weeks you're not this yeah, is exactly. not beautiful yeah. okay so can you just show us a, like a couple of uh, examples of your of the whole thing yeah absolutely and, and, okay. and you know kind of as I said before you know like what we do the the assessment process is our bread and butter with this. You know, it is so thorough and it begins to uncover a lot of these hidden weaknesses. Now, although we said, you know, it's like we're looking to address muscular weakness, we actually use your body's limitation or tightness to determine where these weaknesses are occurring. So, having worked with you, um, you know, in the past, what I'm going to do is just kind of, you know, give a quick example of, you know, what we do, how we work through this process, but this is not the whole assessment. You know, like, like I said, the assessment is a pretty thorough one, but we're just going to give, you know, a, just a little glimpse into you know how we go about uncovering these weaknesses here so what I'm gonna have you do is just move to the center of the table here okay. now Todd has already worked with me so Todd knows exactly where my weaknesses are when I was there for the initial visit I was with Todd for what 45 minutes at least right it must have been yeah. at least yeah. until he actually found and it was I walked out a different person and and you two will find that it's absolutely amazing I cannot wait for anyone who does have any issues to try this to see how amazing this works all right, so what I want you to do, sit up tall, cross your arms, and you're gonna slowly rotate to your left side. Okay, now to me that feels pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do now is sit up tall and rotate to your right side. And if you had to compare that to your left rotation, how does that feel for you? Uh, well, this side's obviously not, it's the same, right? This side's right. obviously not as, as uh movable and, and I'm also shaking at that point. Okay, and that's yeah. kind of and that's what I see also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a muscle that actually is going to be able to rotate her to her right side. I'm going to show how we muscle test it, how we get the muscle to con fire or contract better, and then we're going to come back and retest to see if, you know, not only the motion opened up, but the strength also improved as well. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do, I want you to sit up tall again, cross your arms, and then I want you to rotate to your right side, and from this position what I want you to do is over side bend over the right. Now when I tell you to resist, I want you to hold this position here for a couple seconds, okay? okay. All right, ready? Yeah. And resist. Okay. And so, you know, what we saw there is, you know, it was pretty easy for me to get her out of the position. You know, just to compare, let's show the left side as well. Okay. I want you to rotate to the left and then side bend over your left and hold this position as, I guess, as hard as you can. Ready? Resist and relax. So the left side, definitely a lot easier. So I'm gonna come back and test the right side again. I want you to rotate to the right and right side bend. Okay, ready? Resist. Okay, so what I want, I want you to do, lay down on your back. And so what I'm gonna get into now is kind of how we treat this muscle. So what we use is, you know, kind of like a, a force, what we call like a digital force application on muscle attachment tissue. Um, you know, better yet known as a DFMAT. Um, you want to explain that just a little bit as I'm doing sure. this? We basically press on the attachment sites of the muscles to, to stimulate that, to reconnect the, the brain's connection to, to tell the muscle contract when we ask it to, so contract on demand. So when she was, when she was uh, seated and attempting to <laughs> rotate to the right, what showed up was tightness. Uh, that's, that's what the body does to protect us from weakness. 
So what we found is that when, she, when we saw that she was tight rotating to the right, we need to start asking questions, the, the why questions. Why are you tight rotating to the right? So we start to test the muscles that would have to pull her into the right rotation, one of which he's pressing on right now, and that's the internal oblique. Now one thing I will add, you know, this, you know, the feeling that you can have when uh, you, know, you feel somebody you know, pressing on you, if you see Lindsay sitting here laughing, this could be pretty a pretty ticklish experience. Uh, I wasn't tickling last time. Huh? It was a very tickly time. <clears throat> and it never hurts, ever. No. That never hurts. <laughs> Some places are sensitive. A lot of times going across, this, especially this particular muscle, which is across uh, the abdomen and the ribs, sometimes you can be ticklish in those areas. But in general, if we were attempting to avoid all of that, avoid any pain or discomfort. Right. But I want like you to that. sit up, and we're going to bring your legs back off the table. And so what we're going to do now, once we you know, kind of work to strengthen the muscle, now we're going to retest to see if, one, the range of motion opened up, and two, and most important, to see if the muscle is strong. So I want you to cross your arms on your chest again. We're going to rotate slowly to your right side. Okay, we see a significant yeah, change yeah, in yeah. range of motion right there. Now I want you to side bend. Okay, so now we got one of two things down. So I want you to hold this position for a couple of seconds. Ready? Resist. And relax. Do that one more time. And I want you to hold that as hard as you can. You have to explain that because that was, the difference is amazing. Well, what I want, you know, it's pretty much what I'm asking her to do is, you know, support a position that we just got stronger. Now, the internal oblique muscle, which we just worked on, you know, we got it to function better. Getting a muscle stronger will not only, you know, probably, it, will it will definitely get you to have better range of motion, you'll find performance to improve a lot on you. And in all honesty, you can't strengthen muscles that don't contract. So if she's looking to strengthen her body and wants to strengthen her entire body, first thing you gotta know is, are the muscles contracting? Because if they're not participating in your exercise, then they're not gonna get stronger. So this is a way to do that. I just want you to know that that, for me, that the difference is like just from that to that, and it happened last time. It's, it's amazing. Significant, significant change, and that's just one muscle. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of muscles that are going to help to rotate to the right. We just worked on one. I want to retest it one more time, and side bend again here, and hold that position. Do not let me move you, and resist. See, I'm not shaking anymore. Yeah, that's relax. Really strange. And so we see that the muscle is capable of handling more force, and when the muscle can tolerate more force, what we do see is again the increase in range of motion. And I know for a lot of viewers that are out there, you know, you're, you know. You're you're always doing things to try to get more flexible. And you know, there's not a, to me and to you know, the work that we do, there isn't a better way to get flexible than to get stronger. Right. Yeah, that was the, again, I'm gonna say it again, that was, you have to actually try this to believe it. Like that was not believable for me. That was. Listen, that's, uh, that's how I found it. You know, like I had to have somebody do what I just did to you to literally be like, okay, I gotta learn how this stuff works. And I know when I worked with him, it was the same thing. You know, this is, for us, this was the missing link to us being personal trainers. Well, that, that right there, I mean, she displayed weakness, right? What if you ever caught in that position? and you could not control that position. That's where injury happens, so you have these hidden vulnerabilities. And we generally don't know they exist until we get caught in that perfect storm scenario where we're in the position, we have to stabilize ourselves in that position, and we can't. Okay, we have like, not only professional athletes, but especially in South Florida, there's so many amazing tennis players here. Absolutely. Moms and dads, and I mean, amazing. I see some people actually have to stop because they get tense elbow or something else is bothering them. You know, and it's, it, it's actually it stops part of their life because it's, it is really part of who they are at this point if you live in South Florida and you're a tennis player as an adult. And they're, they, I mean, they're not professional tennis players, but they may as well be at this point. They treat themselves as such. This is an amazing, yeah. amazing way of staying injury free if yeah. they're feeling amazing and amazing way of assessing their injuries without any downtime like we just said and without, like, it, it, it's completely non-invasive. Absolutely. And very like, fast, that was crazy. Yeah. Is that, how long would that last for? Uh, it's really dependent upon the muscle. You know, sometimes it's a simple connection problem. The brain can't effectively tell the muscle contract. Sometimes if it's existing for a long amount of time, the muscle itself becomes deconditioned. So if the muscle doesn't contract for a length of time, it gets weaker over time. 
So sometimes it requires repetitively activating that muscle, getting it up, doing some work, and then it gets stronger over time and its ability to stay on increases over time. And it kind of, it kind of goes back to, you know, the iPhone analogy. You know, it's like when the batteries run low, you know, it's, you know, it's going to, it's going to die and you know, it dies with usage. Okay. And so and that's the number one question people ask us is, well, how long does this stuff hold for? Well, it's going to hold for as long as your body can tolerate the stresses that you're putting onto it, whether it is playing tennis, whether it is running, doing yoga, Pilates, <laughs> CrossFit, uh, you know, whatever activity you decide to do, whether it's just walking, you know, it's like you take your car to the mechanic because your car is out of alignment. You don't necessarily have to do anything to the car, you know, like being a, a major accident for it to go out of alignment, but you know, it still gets out of alignment. It's, you're, 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 it's just normal wear and tear. And so our goal, you know, if you're coming in with like your, your batteries that are on red, our goal is to get it to the green. And as long if we can boot this thing up higher and higher into the green, chances of this breaking down you know, are going to be very, you know, we'll, we'll say low. Yeah. Okay, so how long in general would it take? Is it, is it different per person? How long it takes? For someone in general, how long would it take someone to have their battery charged? Yeah, say? that's it's very specific to the person. Okay. Um, we've seen it happen very rapidly, and then we've also seen some long-term cases. So it just depends on where that person comes in, where their like is analogy, where is their battery when they come in. If they're deep into the red, it's going to take some time to get into the green and maintain green. So right. it just depends on the person and their specific scenarios. Yeah, but the difference is astronomical. That was great. Oh, yeah. I'm doing it tomorrow. Let you know it's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank so PJ and, and Todd for coming in from um, Muscle Activation of South Florida. We'll give you all their information. What is your website? MuscleActivationSouthFlorida.com or M-A-T-S-F-L.com. Okay, and actually scrolling along the bottom here, right? So I hope you guys would uh, be able to to answer some questions that people call you because your number's there Absolutely. And, and they can also um, message you to your We your do website. free consultations. So, Amazing. yeah, if you guys want to come in, sit down for an hour, we'll answer that all your such questions. A great, just to see this for yourself, that if you can be helped by this, that, that was amazing. Yeah. I was remembering equally as amazing the first time you came in, but today, I guess, because I was I had so much tension coming back and forth just from being on the show, mm -hmm. that, that was really great. And you guys need to see it for yourself. It's a great thing to try if you've tried everything else and if you just want to be better at what you're doing. Thank you so much again, and thanks for watching Healthy Little Stronger. Bye. Bye. Hi, thanks for watching Happy Healthy Stronger on WRPBI TV. Please message me on Facebook if there's something that you want to talk about or something that you want me to find out for you. If I can't figure it out myself, I'll bring a professional right here on the show and we'll get the answers that you need. Also, please follow us on Facebook. You're going to find a lot more information on Facebook, a lot more than you can fit into these shows, and you're going to find a lot of videos on Facebook that will hopefully really help you out. Now, last but not least, if you are doing something that makes you feel ridiculously alive, please message me on Facebook. Come on the show, share it with the world, let's make a difference together. Thanks again for watching and have a beautiful day. Lauren Quinn with AskForAdvisors.com. I'm here to tell you I'm really excited about a new website that we've just launched. And I want to tell you a little bit about what it is. 
Yes, there are many psychic lines, but what differentiates us from the rest is that we developed a proprietary program that helps the clients actually facilitate and, in, and be involved in this. We feel as though in this industry there are a lot of positives and negatives, but we've decided to turn this into a positive by taking over and, and being privately held so we can give personalized attention to the clients. If you have any questions, I invite you to go to askforadvisors.com and if you have any questions, contact me personally.